Hi everyone, it is time for a new video and today I'm going to be doing a vlog for the Clear Your Shit Readathon. I'm going to obviously link their um, Twitter and everything down below. It started as like a readathon to clear your shelves before the new year. And so in June, they're doing like an, a second smaller version, which is a month long. I really wanted to participate because I didn't manage to participate at the end of last year because I was just so busy working on too many things. But it is June 15th now, <laughs> but it is happening. So I kind of wanted to do this as like a more laid back chill vlog because I'm working on a lot of like planned TBR videos and so I felt like that was smarter but at the same time there are so many books that I want to read so we'll see and I don't know if I'll be doing this vlog for the next two weeks or until I read a certain amount of books we'll see but there is gonna be a lot of reading and so there are some really fun prompts and the whole readathon I'm honestly just so impressed by it and I love it so much and I definitely need to participate at the end of the year. It's also made as like a, this really cool story almost and it's just the coolest thing ever. I'm gonna show you the prompts and we're gonna go through some books. So I'm pretty sure there are no rules to this readathon besides reading books that you already own. <laughs> so it's all about reading books that you have and clearing your TBR as opposed to buying any new books. And so I want to focus on physical books, but I don't want to make myself just read physical books because I also have some other things that I don't read as much as I should, which is books on my Kindle and audiobooks that I have through Libro FM. So we're gonna get to that. So let's just get through the prompts. And as always, this video will have timestamps on the timeline and in the description box. So if you want to skip anything, don't care about the TBR or whatever, you can go ahead and do that. So, I have a pile of physical books here. As always, I'm going to have many different options for the different prompts because um, that's how I roll. And so, obviously, I'm not going to get to all these books, but I really, really want to get to a lot of them. The first one is Candles, a book with a white or black cover. So, I have... I have two books that are with a black cover. I might have a look to see if I have a white one, but it wasn't like any of the main books that I want to read. The first one, I really hope it works for this because I really want to read this one, and that is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. So I recently found out about this book, this series, and I'm pretty sure it's like super famous and people have known about it for years probably, but I did not. And when I learned what it was about and that it's like found family and character driven and it's incredible, I was like, okay, I need this in my life. I know the whole cover is in black and there's like all the light in here, but I'm just going to say it counts because I really, really want to read it. And it also actually works for another prompt, which is a the next one. And that is a book in a genre you don't normally read. And I'm super excited for this. And the other one actually works for both as well. And that is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I also don't know much about it, but I do know that I have heard amazing things about it. People really, really love it, and it's diverse and amazing. And so I have that as an audiobook on Libro FM, and I've been meaning to read it for like half a year at least. And so it's finally happening. To actually add to the sci fi, I have Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, uh, which is another book I've been wanting to read for so long. It is a part of the Rick Riordan Presents, and it's so cool because, like, it is sci-fi, and I, before this book, I'm pretty sure all the Rick Riordan Presents books were, like, the way that Rick's books are, which is, like, set in our world with magic, so, like, urban fantasy or something, and so this, I'm pretty sure, is sci-fi. I don't know exactly how it works, I don't really know much, I know there is Korean folklore, and that's all that I know. I, I, I also love this cover, and I want to read all the Rick Riordan Presents books, and so I'm really excited for this. So now I actually realized that I haven't thought of all the prompts, <laughs> so I've been talking for way too long anyway, so I think we're gonna get to some of the ones that I'm not sure about, and we'll just now talk about the books that I really want to get to, because like, obviously I want to do the prompts, but of what I can about the most is reading books that I've been wanting to read for ages and having fun 
Um, so let me see. I have a book that I think could be more than a hundred pages, but I'm scared. That yes. Okay. <laughs> I was scared it wouldn't, but it's 424. So for the prompt in the second row, Ancient Grimoire, a book that's 400 pages or more, we have Cast and Firelight by Dana Swift. Now that I think about it, Black Sun could also be more than 400 pages. But we have a physical book as well. I don't really know much about it. I think it's a fantasy romance. I think it's YA and um, it's an arranged marriage situation, which I realize is a, is a trope I absolutely love and desperately want to read more of. So it's hopefully happening. The next one is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. So this one counts for a comfort read and um, a, genre, a book in your favorite genre. Then the next book, like, oh my god, I need to fucking read, and that is A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee. So this is an adult romance. It's rivals to lovers. There's baking. There's cool, funny things happening. Um, and then I have Beach Read by Emily Henry. So I'm not fully sure about this one, if I want to read it in this vlog, but I definitely want to read it. And the last one is We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel and Solomon. When I'm filming this, I got the book in the mail today. I love the cover. I don't really know much about it, but I do know that I love Rachel and Solomon. I loved Today, Tonight, Tomorrow and The X Talk, and so I was highly anticipating this. Some of these books are probably going to move into other reading vlogs because obviously I can't read all of this in here, but I'm super excited, so um, let's just shut up. <laughs> and get straight into the reading vlog. It is time for an update. It's been quite a few days. I have been working on too many things at the same time as per usual, but I do have some reading updates. The first thing that I need to update you on is that I started reading We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel and Solomon. I am on page 118. It is about Quinn and Tarek, and the two of them used to be really close friends. They were childhood best friends, which I didn't know going into this book. I basically knew nothing going into this book, and it's kind of like slightly like childhood best friends to... Um, basically the way that I describe my books, which is like the strangers to lovers, so they kind of had an argument and there were a lot of things that happened that um, just kind of made them drift apart and they didn't talk for like a year at least. And so now they get reunited and things go on from there. Their parents, like both of their parents, have wedding businesses and so it revolves a lot around weddings. The other update that I have, I haven't done any more reading, like I have done more reading but not for this video so we're not gonna get into that. But <laughs> I kind of basically broke one of the rules of the Queer Your Shit readathon. I don't know if it's like an official rule and that is like the point of the readathon is to clear your shelves. To read books you already have but guess what? <laughs> I got a new book today. This book is called Book Love by Debbie Tung. I know nothing about it. <laughs> so I went to the bookstore for one purpose only and that was to got to buy Marvel comics because I've never read them and I realized that like I'm always frustrated that at the bookstore they, nev they never have the comics that I want but I always saw the stacks of the Marvel comics so turns out it wasn't as much as I always thought. So when I was actually interested in it, there was barely anything. And this just, honestly, I just saw Book Love. I saw this cute cover, you know, a girl and books, like that's just me and she has glasses, so yes. I'll never tell, never tell, just trust that I'll keep it locked in a cell. Never revealing no secrets, you're keeping these promises strong as a spell. I'll never tell. That's for sure, never have to close the door Been a long time, a year before And I'm missing you so bad Gone away, a month or more Every show I go before I need to hear that voice Cause right now it feels like it's been so long I could never let, let you go Go on thinking about the secrets too So, hi everyone, it is time for a lot of updates. It's been a few days, I had to go to my aunt's place for a few days to dox it because <laughs> she had to go away for work and whatever, so I couldn't really vlog, but I have done a lot of reading, so let's just get straight into the updates because there's a lot <laughs> to update you on. So last time I talked to you about We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel and Solomon, so I finished reading it 
and I kind of have um, mixed feelings about it. So one thing that I want to mention before I get into like the details, my thoughts and whatever, is that um, Tarek, the love interest in this book, is Muslim. And I saw one Muslim reader on Goodreads say that like the rep really sucks. So it's the kind of rep where um, he doesn't really practice the religion and it's never really like talked about or it's literally just mentioned in one scene on page like 220 or something so before that we don't have a clue about it or anything and it's never really addressed so there are like a few lines about it and I know that a lot of Muslim readers have expressed that um, it's not great when non-Muslim authors write rep where the characters don't even really like identify with their religion fully so so many people have said that that is just not a good representation so i just wanted to like warn you or you know let you know about that because i haven't really seen anyone else mention it on goodreads or anywhere else like i haven't actually just generally seen that many people talk about this book but just so you know that is what is going on and yeah um this book focuses a lot on the weddings so, like I said, the parents of both of the main characters have, like, wedding businesses, and so that's a big part of the book, and I did like the, like, wedding settings and all of that, and Quinn basically is about to go to college, and so it definitely feels like a way older YA than normal, almost like a cross between YA and new adult, because, like, Tarek is already at college, and Gwen is about to go, so, you know, Quinn has to work with her parents because it's, like, a family business and they think that she's going to work um, with them forever or, like, <laughs> you know, like, in the future for a long time. And she doesn't really want that, so at the beginning of the book she's like, I'm not really interested in it anymore, and so that is a big part of the book, so it's, like, her figuring out what she wants to do with her life and trying to tell her parents and all of that and so the structure of this book is really different from what I from what I expected I just thought it would be focused on the romance and so the way that the romance develops it starts really early on and it's basically like the two of them start kind of like casually dating and Quinn is like doesn't really want to have an actual relationship it made sense for Quinn's character that like she was afraid of falling in love but there were so many situations where she like talked about it or said something or did something and it kind of felt like Tarek cared more about her than she cared about him and like it kind of came together pretty nicely in the end but I just didn't fully love that and overall like there was quite a lot of conflict and I just I hate arguing or anything like that and I just didn't fully love it and I do think that Today Tonight Tomorrow I loved way more than this book. I read a ton of books that I never fully even had on my TBR. You know, that always happens. It's fine. At least I did some reading. So the next book that I read was Maybe Next Time by Christina C. Jones. So I, cl I completely flew through this one. I actually started this like a few weeks ago, got about like 30% of the way through, and then I got, you know, distracted by a million other things. So I did want to get back to it and finish it. So I'm glad I did that. You know, we're being productive. This book is an adult romance novella. It's like 94 pages and it's about Denver and Kensa and the two of them are married. And Kensa at the beginning of the book, she's really not happy anymore and she kind of feels like Denver doesn't care about her. So she says that she wants to get a divorce and then Denver is like, well, fuck no, absolutely not. And I, it was like a fun quick read, but I didn't love that like Denver wasn't taking no for an answer at all at the beginning and like he clearly had some issues and he did like kind of make up for it. He realized that like what he was doing wasn't the best, but it was still kind of weird and he kind of like kidnapped Kensa so that they could like talk about everything and fix their issues which like you know fixing their issues and all of that that's great but it took him a little bit too long to like listen to what Kensa wanted but like in the end you know he got there at least so <laughs> yeah um I overall enjoyed this but I would recommend the second book in the series much more so I did read this 
before the first one because I just someone recommended it or whatever and it's obviously standalone so it's fine but the second one is maybe this time so I read that like a month or two ago and I absolutely loved this one so this one is best friends to lovers and the two of them kind of basically get married in Vegas and so this one was so fun I wouldn't say that like don't read the first book but if you you know if you don't like books about established couples or whatever then I would just say read the second book because that one is amazing but like I still enjoyed the first book as well like I didn't hate it so and then I completely flew through Feed by Avida Weiss so this is like a super short it literally is only 48 pages so it's like a novelette short story type of thing and it's like a monster romance steamy short thing <laughs> and um it's a erotic romance between a gender queer death's head hawk moth fairy and a succubus so that is the way that the author described it and it was so quick to read and i felt i was so impressed by the way that avida managed to develop the two main characters in such a short amount of pages like i felt like i actually really got to know them and you know like um i was really invested and there is i'm pretty sure gonna be like a full-length novel so i'm so ready for that and it was just so fun it was really steamy and i just felt like it was so well developed and it was just incredible and i can't wait for anything else that Avida writes in the future so yes and like I said in the description it does have a gender queer main character one of them is gender queer and uses he they pronouns so we love to see it and yes so I absolutely recommend this one and again it is super super short so I read it in like half an hour <laughs> the last book that I read was Break Up With Him For Me by Whitney G so <laughs> Whitney G's books for me are like the perfect like no brain needed just fun type of books so I kind of always have like a, some little issues with the books like some lines or like the vibes or the plot isn't fully developed or whatever but it's mostly fun and so that was kind of the same thing with this book so like I feel like Whitney always writes the same books I've read like three books before this one and or four even and so this one is my fifth one or fourth one whatever it's been quite a few and all of them had the same exact vibe especially the hero so it's kind of that like alpha male um arrogant super rich type of guy who's like super flirty fuck boy <laughs> that kind of thing and so that is absolutely the vibe in here and so if you don't like that then Whitney G is absolutely not for you but if you do like that then Whitney G is an author that you might want to check out. So this book is basically about Penelope and Hayden I think. It's kind of like hate to friends to love and so they kind of hated each other at first and it has the brother's best friend trope as well but mostly they become super close best friends and a big part of the book is especially in the first half Penelope basically tells Hayden about all her boyfriends and like all her failed relationships and so that is a big part of the book which normally I would expect myself to hate it but there were just so much content with the two main characters and like the way that it was written was really fun there were some like questionable little smaller things um I did put some things in the content warning so do check that out I'm gonna have my goodreads linked down below so there is some content that was just kind of like I didn't love it so I had some issues with it and I do think it was a little bit too long but the romance was really fun and like I was invested and I liked how close they were when they were best friends already and so I think I mostly enjoyed it and it was steamy and fun and yeah the brother as always like I don't like the brother's best friend trope and the brother was insufferable in this book like thank god he wasn't there a lot but there were some scenes where he was trying to be like so controlling and he was such a dick so like he was disgusting so <laughs> I hated him completely but besides that um it was mostly fun so um, I think the things that I'm going to read next 
are um, A Sweet Mess by JC Lee, which was under my TBR, yes. <laughs> and The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett. So this was not on my TBR, but it's a physical book that I've had for actually since Christmas, I think. So like not that long, but it's been half a year. So, you know, like it's probably time. And I was going to read it in the winter, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. And I was just like kind of looking at my shelves trying to figure out what other physical books that I wanted to read because I do want to get through my physical TBR at least a little bit for this readathon. And I just looked at this and I was like, you know what, maybe I'm going to give this a chance. And I did get the audiobook so that I can get through this quicker. Oh, I'll never tell, never tell, just trust that I'll keep it locked in a cell. Never revealing no secrets you're keeping These promises strong as a spell I'll never tell, tell, tell Oh, it's true, oh, it's true 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 So it is time for some updates I just made myself iced cocoa <laughs> in this pineapple glass and I'm super excited to drink it and I have a lot of reading up not a lot but I have some reading updates so I forgot to tell you that I decided to pick up um take the lead I think by Alexis Daria so I picked this book up when I was at my aunt's place and this is a book that I started like a year ago or something. <laughs> and I have this thing where obviously there sometimes there are books that like I stop reading because I am not really interested in them and then I DNF or whatever. But it happens to me, not like often, but it's happened multiple times that I started a book and I was enjoying it, but then I stopped reading it, I picked up other things. Then I always, when that happens, I always struggle to get back to it because my brain is like, I have to finish reading it. It makes it so much harder to pick it up and read it even when it's fun. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's super frustrating, but I picked this book up and I'm like, yes, it's happening. So I'm halfway through and I actually really like this book a lot, which is why I've been dying to get back to it and finally read it. This is an adult romance and it is set at like a dancing competition, something like Dancing with the Stars, basically. The heroine is the dancer in the couple and the hero basically was like in this reality show with his family in Alaska and so the two of them are like a couple for the show and things go on from there and I love it they definitely have chemistry and it's really fun it's kind of like a slow burn romance a little bit and they become friends and then it grows into more Gina I'm pretty sure is the heroine's name she has a rule that she never dates any of her any of her partners I absolutely love the setting and like the dancing competition because like I literally always wanted to read something like this and then I found this book and so I just I love the concept so much I love dancing I especially love the like I don't know what the official name is but just the like couple dancing I adore it and then <laughs> I picked up The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett and I got to page 100 so we are a quarter of the way through and I'm listening to the audiobook along with the book which I am very happy about so I just feel like there are some books on my physical TBR that sometimes I feel like I just know that they would be better if I listened to them. So the main character, um, her, she basically lives in this like kingdom that is on top of a frozen lake and whatever. It's like a uh, winter cold ice kingdom. And she is like one of the youngest people in the family and her family absolutely sucks. And so she wants to run away. But before she can do that, um, her whole family, her, her siblings, everyone, they mysteriously get this like illness that just makes them fall asleep and not wake up. And so she becomes the Duke. And so that 
is kind of the plot, and there is the, I, right before I was about to update you, I was like, oh my gosh, am I not gonna know who, lo who the love interest is, like, when I update you, but then, the second after that, I was introduced to the love interest, and so this, uh, this has a sapphic romance, I'm super excited, um, there was literally, like, two seconds of it so far, but it's kind of like a marriage of convenience in a way, which I'm so fucking here for, didn't know that at all, and so this book so far has been heavily, like, court intrigue, which I really like. Um, I think that that is, like, my favorite type of fantasy. I'm not, like, the most excited or the most invested yet, but I do really like it and I'm excited to keep reading, so I'm really glad that I picked this one up. So I do still really want to read A Sweet Mess, but I think I'm probably going to do that after I finish the, um, Taking the Lead by Alexis Daria. But I also, the last thing that I'm going to mention for now is I got the idea, because <laughs> I'm feeling so ambitious and I'm like, I'm ready to clear my shelf. And at the beginning of the video, like, the books that I mentioned were mostly newer books that, you know, were the most, like, exciting and fresh and whatever, but I decided to dig deeper into the older TBR that is not so exciting anymore, and I picked up... The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So I haven't started it at all or anything because obviously I want to finish The Winter Duke first. So I don't really know much about this book at all, but it's super popular. I kind of spontaneously bought it a while ago when I ran into it at the bookstore. And I always felt like this book just wouldn't be for me, but I just feel like... It could be really fun and really cool, and I really want to pick it up now. So I'm determined. It is like... 478 pages so don't love that but once again I got the audiobook I think I'm gonna divide the clear your shit vlogs into this one and like a 48 hour readathon one so I don't know if I'm gonna read this here or after but I am determined to get to this so it's happening but one more thing that I forgot about is I watched <laughs> the newest episode of Loki with my sister and my mom. Today it is the third episode and let's just say <laughs> I am so fucking here for it. I love it. I, I'm so happy and like oh my fucking god. So thriving, adore Loki. I was always a stan. Not, I wasn't always a stan but I have been a hardcore stan since Thor Ragnarok and now I'm just only like becoming more of a stan. So yeah and I actually, fun fact, <laughs> I saw Tom Hiddleston in a play and it's so weird because it was literally like, oh my god was it March? Of last year holy shit okay yeah that is weird <laughs> um, it was in London and I'm pretty sure it was called betrayal and so I saw him in a play with my best friend and it was super fucking cool I literally like forget about it for months on end and then I remember and I'm like holy shit like I saw Tom Hiddleston in front of me in real life like holy shit and it, it feels like another lifetime honestly because it was before everything happened in the world you know um so yeah it's super weird to think about it but it happened so just had to you know <laughs> mention that so yeah now i'm gonna shut up and i'll talk to you when i have some more reading updates it is later in the day and it is time for some updates i finished two books and that was Take the Lead by Alexis Daria and The Winter Duke. So Take the Lead by Alexis Daria. I really enjoyed it. I am so happy that I could finally get to it and finish it and read it. And yes, so overall it was great. I absolutely loved Stone and Gina. Like they were amazing characters on their own and together they just had such a strong bond and I was so fucking here for it. I absolutely loved the forced proximity of the dancing, being dancing partners, all of that, all the dancing things in the book I absolutely loved as well. Um, the main issues that I had were that I feel like the plot was definitely a little bit slow, but it wasn't too bad. Um, and the other thing that I absolutely did not like either was that the third act conflict 
lasted for so fucking long and I know that there are people who like that you know you do you but I am just I don't I hate it like I understand why authors write it but I just I don't like it so it lasted quite a long time and it was just painful and I don't like pain so but besides that I really liked it and I am definitely gonna be reading the two other books in this series and I really recommend you check it out especially if you like dancing and all of that and for proximity and just like a romance that like they first become really good friends and then it grows into more then definitely check the book out and then like I said I also finished The Winter Duke um and I really enjoyed it as well so I'm not really sure I think yeah I rated it 3.5 stars so like I told you this has a lot of like court politics type stuff going on and that is the biggest part of the book so that is the main plot that is what is going on the entire time and the romance in here is like the tiniest subplot so there's not a lot of it what we do get I absolutely loved it was so cute and like I was so here for it so once again as always <laughs> with fantasy books with romances I wish we got more it, like, I do think it could have been definitely, like, more developed, and I just, I feel like we really should have gotten more scenes, not just because I want as much romance as possible, but I just feel like it would have made it stronger, but it was already strong the way it was, but I just, I wish we got more, and we have a lot of scenes with the main character and this, like, villain who is really annoying and frustrating, and... If like at least half of those scenes were replaced with scenes with the love interest, I would have been way happier. And I do think that the book could have been shorter because I do feel like it felt a little bit drawn out, but it was really fun and I do think that the audiobook listening helped a lot and like it um, was still really good and really fun and really quick to read and I don't know if I said that it's a standalone. I really liked the world building and the magic in here. And yeah, I just like, even though I'm not like a plot person, I do think that like, I didn't really care that much about the court politics stuff. <laughs> and like, I wish some of that was replaced with more romance as well. But if you like court intrigue and politics and all of that, and you want a lot of content with that, then I think you could really like this. So this was definitely more plot driven than character driven, but at the same time like there there was quite a big focus on the main character's journey as she kind of figured out what it was like to be a duke and how she could be a good duke but remain a good person, so I did like that as well. Overall it was really good and I'm really happy that I picked it up and finally read it. I have already now planned out officially that I'm doing a 48 hour readathon version of the Clear Your Shit readathon this weekend probably, so it is Thursday now. but. I still want to read some books for this video, um, so I'm not sure how many I'm gonna finish. I would like to finish at least one more, but one book that I want to mention to you that I think I really want to pick up and maybe pick that, pick that up next um, is The Duchess War by Courtney Milan. So once again, this wasn't on my official TBR, but I'm really like digging deep <laughs> into the depths of my shelves so this one is not on my physical shelves but I've had it saved on Scribd for honestly at least maybe even a year and I, I also started this one and I got to 15% um, and I still remember it and that's how I always know that like I should get back to the book because if I remember it, it must have been good. <laughs> I really want to get back to it and I love Courtney Milan and I've been dying to read this series for so long. I even have the second book already. Yeah, I'm just, I love this so much because I feel so motiv so motivated to just read books that I've been like avoiding but books I really think I'm gonna love. I already said that but just I love this for me. So yeah, I'm just gonna go back to reading and I'll update you whenever I have some more updates. <laughs> You're an angel, that's for sure With some devil, hear you roar But I like it, we on the floor And my baby whispering Used to have fun, now I'm bored Do I miss you? Yes, of course Think about that time When we stayed up all night Hi everyone, it is finally time for another update I have some iced cocoa here And I have cake Which I'm so fucking excited for. I think that this is gonna be like a wrap up for this video. 
I have some things to update on and I think I should just wrap it up here because this video is already really long and I have so many other reading plans and things that I need to read right now and I feel like I'm just stressing myself out at this point and I've read so many amazing books already and I just need to focus on having fun instead of reading every single thing that I wanted to. So let's talk about it. So I don't know if I will keep it in the video or if I cut it out, <laughs> but um, I originally wanted to do like a 48 hour version of the Clear Your Shit Readathon after this one so that there I could like finish up all the main books that I wanted to get to, but then I ended up participating in the 24 hour readathon of the Read Your Gaze Readathon which I actually don't know if it like officially ended up happening because the Twitter was deleted so I'm like I don't know but I participated in it and I vlogged it so I'm gonna link it down below. I have another video that I want to get up by the end of the month so it's chill it's fine so yeah I do think that I am going to do a video soon on catching up on these books just not like officially for the clear your shit readathon but just like kind of you know for myself because just this has been so fun and I'm so glad that I made this video and vlogged about it but yes like I have an update I started The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and I'm so proud of myself and I'm really excited so like I told you I wanted to get to this after finishing The Winter Duke and I did and so I am only on page 90 um, so not very far this book is 500 pages but it is a start and I'm actually really excited for this so I'm not gonna get into the details that much because again this video has been so long and I feel like a lot of people know this book already but just in case you don't know you know just like to give you a little bit of an idea of what this is is basically I don't fully know what genre to call it because I've always heard people say it's a YA fantasy but it's set in our world and then there are like fantasy elements and so like there is a story within a story so the main character basically stumbles across a hidden book that looks really strange and super intriguing and it kind of reminds him of something that he knew in his childhood and so he goes on this journey of like figuring out more about the book and like finding different things and there is magic and like it's really cool and the writing is really beautiful and absolutely love the copy it's so floppy and it's like really the paper is really thin and I'm just I'm here for it and so I'm intrigued and I always thought that this book wouldn't really be for me and I still think that might end up being the case but I think that like I'm going to appreciate it for what it is and enjoy it in some ways so I'm still really excited to keep going with this and I do think I really want to update you on this one um soon in another video so I'm gonna hopefully talk about that very soon so I mentioned to you that I wanted to read The Duchess War and that is happening <laughs> but um it is gonna be happening in another readathon that is happening that's actually starting today it's Monday right absolutely no idea but it's happening from Monday June 28th to July 4th, so it's Monday to Sunday, and it's a historical romance readathon. And so, obviously, The Duchess War is a historical romance, and so I can read it literally like in the next few days in this week and talk to you about it there. So, that's definitely happening. And then, Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, I really want to get to as well. I think I'm just gonna do that in another vlog. I don't know if I'll do like a chill weekend reading vlog. Or like a week-long vlog or a 24-hour or 48-hour readathon I don't know but we'll see something is gonna be happening <laughs> so yeah but I'm really proud of myself that I picked up physical books and I read those ones I feel like was there another one um, maybe not but yes yeah. so I haven't finished the Starless Sea but I absolutely did not expect to read the Winter Duke and so I'm so happy that I did that and also a sweet mess by JC Lee I unfortunately didn't get to that either and I remembered though that <laughs> there is yet another readathon that is gonna be happening and I don't remember when so I need to check that 
but it's either in July or in August and it's hosted by Chloe from Books with Chloe and Monica Kim and it's called the Koreathon and it's all about reading books by Korean authors and last year it was in July so I think it might be in July again but either way it's gonna be soon and this book is by a Korean American author and I feel like I think the both of the two main characters are also Korean American again the uh, readathon Twitter is gonna be linked down below as well as the two amazing creators of it and don't forget that the readathon is the once again gonna be happening in November and December so obviously it's a while to go but I'm so ready like I am participating in it I'm putting it out there I'm gonna be participating I'm gonna go so hard and I'm so excited. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, leave a flower emoji down below because I'm wearing flowers and yes, and whichever one you want. And thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. A lot of content is coming. And yeah, have a great day and I'm going to see you soon in another video. Bye!